Hello, my lovely people. I greet you all. Umu Chineke, anywhere you are watching this video, I greet you according to your time zone. If it is your first time of coming across this platform, Linda's TV show, you are welcome. If you like what you are doing, like, subscribe to this page, and leave your comment constructively. I want to appreciate you too for creating this wonderful platform that we are using to disseminate information to the members of the public. At the same time, I put a disclaimer that here in Linda's TV show, we do not promote war, violent hate speech, or instigate war, but rather we are here to educate, inform the members of the public about what is happening. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and my brother, the celebrant Chris Okoye, and his adorable wife, it gives me so much pleasure to be part of this event holding at the cold city Enugu, which has a place of honor in Nigeria's history. But let me start by wishing my friend and brother, engineer Chris Okoye, and his beautiful wife, a very happy birthday. May the good Lord bless and keep you in all that you do and continue to expand your coast. And I pray that the path of common good that both of you have chosen will keep you both scaling more heights and scoring several more goals. Amen. It is with a very deep sense of responsibility and commitment that I address you today as chairman of the public presentation of the book titled In Brotherhood We Stand, a roadmap for the rebirth of a fragmented nation, written by the birthday boy Chris Okoye himself. This book is of interest to me because it is a direct fallout from the National Political Reform Conference, which my administration organized in 2005 and which Chris Okoye is a delegate. The 22 chapter book can be described as prescriptively interesting and exciting. As I said during my inaugural speech to the delegates, the National Political Reform Conference presented us with the opportunity to reassess refocus, redefine, and redesign our political landscape in a direction that will strengthen the bonds of unity, enhance the process of democracy consolidation, strengthen the structures so as to solidify those values that promote democracy, good governance, and good neighborliness, and open boundless opportunities for all Nigerians to be and to feel that they are integral part of the evolving political process and socioeconomic advancement of a nation destined to be great. Late Professor Ben Wabuese, in his foreword to the book, stated 
and I quote, A time comes in the life of a nation when she must do away with histrionics and face the reality of her development challenges with courage, honesty, and commitment. End of quotation. The clarion call in Nigeria today is one for restructuring and a reassessment of the terms of our union as a nation. No matter how economically viable a nation is, bad governance and a wrong system of administration can bring it down. Indeed, there's direct correlation between economic and political reforms. As a nation, our history reveals clearly that we have been through some difficulty, some difficult times and have missed great opportunities. Our historical experiences at constitutional constitution making and political reforms show that we may have some structural defects that require adjustment so as not to continue to constrain the deepening, widening, and consolidation of democratic values and practices. Indeed, some of the contradictions and challenges bequeathed by the colonial administration have continued to pose problems for us to this day. And one of such bequests is Western liberal democracy. As things stand, therefore, our constitution-making efforts must go down to the grassroots to deal with the issues of inclusion, popular participation, equity, ownership, and legitimacy, rights and obligations with adequate components of African communalism, caring and sharing. While we have managed to work with available instruments and institutions over the years, some of the imperfections in the system and the constrained legitimacy of the instrument have culminated in seeming alienation of some constituencies and the inability to have all hands on deck. This, over time, had led to coups and counter coups, political manipulation, weak political parties, and poor leadership, corruption, and the inability of the state to meet the basic needs of the people. In one word, we have been rolling from one bad governance to another. In the process, we try to adjust to the weaknesses of the system and equally adapted to doing without some of those fundamentals that really ought to drive the political process. Some issues that have emerged include, but are not limited to, the challenge of constitutionalism 
and constitutional reform, the opportunity to bring all stakeholders together to discuss the preferred political path for the nation, the challenge of building new, accountable, responsive, and focused leadership with enchanting character and attributes, and how to build, operate, and sustain real political liberties, social justice, rights and obligations, electoral reforms that ensure credibility, integrity, and respectability of elections, relation between tiers of government, performance of government, and how to ensure truly democratic governance for all. In all of this, the central challenge is still how to strengthen the social contract between the custodian of state powers and the governed. And whoever we are, giving ourselves mutual respect. Of course, not all segments constituencies and individuals will be or can be totally satisfied. This is normal in every nation. And we are no, but no individual, no individual or group should be deliberately or systemically left out. The best way to express maturity and patriotism is to be positive and objective. What we want in Nigeria is unity, cohesion, equity, justice, togetherness, and collective commitment to our progress and to the Nigeria project. We want to move forward, look forward, move up and look up about the past to help the present and to inspire the future and work for a stronger, a more united Nigeria in a true democratically in a true democracy with African content. In a democracy there must be checks and balances and there must be effective watchdogs with African history and culture. One issue that have no, that have to resolve. One issue we have to resolve is who watches the watchdog effectively and transparently with whistle blowing at the levels of the legislature executive, judiciary, and the fourth estate of the realm. Critically, one of the areas I think we have the greatest headache is in our composition and performance of the electoral management body, the independent National Electoral Commission. Let the President recommend and let the National Assembly compose the Commission after public hearing to expose each candidate so that the hidden and dark aspect of their life can be seen. And the body must be responsible to the National Assembly 
to reduce the influence of the executive and reduce the possibility of rigging emanating from the top. This book will stand a death book in brotherhood will stand a road for the rebirth of a fragmented nation may not be the total solution to Nigeria's problems and challenges, but it will certainly be one of the sure guides for the Nigeria of our dreams, where democracy and good governance are sustained and where our diversity become the strongest fusion of our unity. From my observation in the book, not attempt to analyze nor compare, it may create vision of workable system and set out to present proposals and programs that can be said to be realistically designed and calculated to be to for the realization of the system that will work that will work better this book resonates as an actionable treatise on the nature of Nigeria's federalism. It proposes reform of the judiciary and makes a case for collapse of grouping of the present 36 states into regional structures using the six geopolitical zones as a template. It shows at a glance that the failure of the nation's democracy is indeed the result of the absence of strong institutions and platforms upon which democracy must thrive. The recurrent problem of electoral corruption and lack of free and fair and credible election as such which thrives when political institutions are weak, was not left out. Two important organs of the democratic society, the judiciary and the leg legislature, were presented as indispensable handmaids of a de democratic state. The bony issue on the composition of our electoral umpire, INEC, is also not left out. A very strong note in this very well produced book is the issue of restructuring and re referendum to assert the sovereignty of the people to effect changes in a polity. The experiences of several nations on the power of the people through referendum show that it has been successfully used in authenticating of policies, building institutions, and the adoption of political systems and leadership. It can be it cannot be any different in Nigeria. Well, there will be areas where others we not fully agree with Chris Okoye in this book, even though it's essentially the outcome of a conference. I have areas of my reservation, but it is a book that can enhance the discourse and raise the level of discourse on Nigeria of our dream, Nigeria that we want. A Nigeria that will lift us up to where God has created us to be. Lastly, I must not 
fail to congratulate engineer Chris Okoye. Engineer Chris Okoye's wife, Professor Ifeoma Okoye, for attaining the biblical age of 70 and still going strong, for successfully bringing to a close a very impactive career in the Nigerian health sector. Madam, you may be retired, but certainly not tired or old as at all from the way you look. And uh, if I may dare say by comparison, you and I, if I am still not old, you cannot claim to be old. And when the global community, Nigerian nation, and the authorities of the University of Nigeria in Suka and the University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital, UMTH, come knocking. Please do not turn your back on them. I cannot close this speech without acknowledging the efforts of a Nigerian that is slowly but surely becoming the conscience of our nation. I'm talking, of course, my brother Peter Obi, in ensuring I share this occasion. He left no stone unturned to make sure that I make myself available. I am glad that I do online. Thank you all, and may God bless Nigeria and every Nigerian, especially at a time such as the one we are, pres we are presently living in. Thank you. For then, but this is someone that's come and time pass and say that, he's come out to say that he's not an Igbo, but all of a sudden, um, he's, he's now uh, admitting to, to him being an Igbo. Um, I don't know what has really changed, but what do you see? What can I say to that? You know, uh, that's why it looks as if Igbo man is peaceful. Igbo man are the most radicalized and black nation in the world. We are pest setters in all ramification. When you talk about cube, it was Igbo man that did the first cube in Nigeria. When you talk about anything, anything at all, we set the, the ball rolling first before anybody. Even recently, you can see it is everywhere. Igbo man was the first person to lift Olympics in Atlanta. We are pest setters. You can't take that away from us. Why you see, bros? Why we are saying this is not just for record purposes. It's just the right thing we are talking about. That do not look at the humility and the simplicity. Because the humble looking of a lion does not mean that the lion is weak. Asari Dokubo should not take Igbos for granted. And he knows. We are not violent people. We believe in peace. But if you say that I will not have peace, show me where I will have peace. That is what the woman believes in. And that is what they have been living on for centuries. So anything that is away from that, we are not going to take it. Bro, Asari himself knows that he is too small. Huh? When we want to handle somebody like him, he's too small. The, 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 the humble looking of a lion does not mean that the lion is weak. That's just the truth. So until we get to that level, where that consciousness will come. And of course it's coming. You know, those who say they are not, they are beginning to say they are. That's just the way to go. I, I, I think he's beginning to lose grip. You know, his hope is beginning to fall him. You know, reality has begun to stare him in the face. You know, uh, you, can, the, the, you can fake a lot of things in this world, but you cannot fake reality. You know, um, Asari Dokubo himself knows that he has faked a lot of things. You know, and those things he has faked has come back to haunt him. The only thing that can stand in life is reality. You know, you can fake a certificate like Tinubu, fake a, a lifestyle like uh, anybody. You know, but. Reality is reality. You, you understand what I'm saying? So I think 
to, to a certain point now, Asadu Okubo has begun to realize reality and, has, and reality has continued to stare him on the face. You know, before now, um, uh, pre to that election era, you saw what, how the kind of statement that was coming from the, I don't want to use a derogatory uh, uh, adjective to qualify him against the Igbos, you know, where he was threatening. He even said that his grandfather, listen, you know, to tell you the, the kind of a man he is, he even said that his grandfather enslaved Igbos, you know, that Igbos were, they are, they are, they are slaves to his grandfather. You know, but the same Igbos, they are, they are saying that they were slaves to their grandfather. And the same Igbos, you come out recently to say that your father is, is from uh, uh, is an Igbo man and therefore automatically that you are an Igbo man. But we know the truth. The truth is, the fact is, the Ejos, majority of the Ejos, majority of the Calabari, him too, is from, you know, Calabari and Ejo, uh, they are just, uh, they share border, they are just uh, uh, like, you know, um, uh, 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 State, Lagos and Augustate, you know, they just, they, are, uh, they share the same community, the same everything. So, Asabi Okubo is a Calabari man. And uh, uh, the Calabari, they have all close relationship with the Ijo. So he can actually claim Calabari, he can cl also claim Ijo. But what I'm trying to say is that about 50% of the Ijo's, the so called Ijo, so to say, are, you know, people of Igbo extraction. That is just it. Because if you can remember the history, there was a man they called King Jaja of Popopo in those days. You know, the King Jaja of Popopo is the man that founded. The bunny and the bunny uh, axis houses what is shaking in Urubo. Name them, you know, all those areas, the, uh, the entire Niger Delta, precisely. That's the truth, you know. It was that King Dada of Opopo that was in charge of that territory. So, if Asari is coming out to say, okay, whether he has repented or he has lost hope to what he was expecting, he wanted to use such statement to negotiate, he has fed woefully. And, uh, Practically, he's coming back to his basis. Of course, the Igbos have no option because we know that he is Igbo. There are no two ways. Me, I know that Asari Dokubo is Igbo. I can even call, tell, tell you his Igbo name. His father, who is Edi Abale, is from Abam, Ahafia. You, you understand? Just like Precious Jonathan. Most of these people you see today, you know, are Igbo. But unfortunately, because of the 1976 uh, 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 Nigeria Biafra War, you know, a, a lot of Igbos, uh, you know, renounce that, that identity, you know, and turn their own property to abandon property. But today, all those properties now, they say it's abandoned property in Port Harcourt and elsewhere. The, 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 the same Igbos have bought it. That is the way it is. So, if Asari Dokubo now has realized that, hey, reality is reality and is running for safety, of course, uh, he is welcome, you know, but the truth is still remains that whether he's playing games or not, we know who he is. This is a, an Igbo man, you know, from Calabari. Of course, we know Calabari is a river state. The, 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 the river state was founded by a man called Uguacha. Uguacha is an Igbo man. Before they came and changed the name to Potakot, uh, uh, some of these missionaries came, they, they, were, they, they named the place after the missionary. Potakot. That was what, you know, the Harcourt. The man's name is Harcourt something. You know, because the, the place is located around a coastal area where they always anchor using that port. That's what they call it, Potakot. You know, but the real name of that place is Uguacha. And Uguacha in Igbo language means white hill. Bro, do you understand what I'm saying? That is why the, the Northerners and the Yorubas are leveraging on, on that to destroy and, and bring down the Igbo influence and identity. And of course, that question has come beginning to arise and people begin to understand that why you do, why you do everywhere. You know, and that's the reality. Those who are saying, like, uh, I'm not go and check their names. They are all Igbos. Even by Edwin Clark, but the the the, the president or the chairman of Pandev. You know, he, he was a student of uh, 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 Government College Omaha. He school in Government College Omaha, and he was PA to Doctor Namdazikiwe 
all throughout his life. God has given me. So anybody that is saying that Igbos are not pesetas in all ramifications in this country is taking it for, you know, is just making a, 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 a falsified a, a statement. So, Asari Dokubo, you are welcome. Whatever that has inspired you, let it continue to inspire you. But the, the fact still remains that when the, the cause is clear, we define what is at stake. That is just the truth. But sorry, but so, someone has come and said that um, Asari Dokubo is not consistent with what he says. Um, or is it that some, some have said that um, I think maybe the Igbo will be scared of him for, for, for him accepting to be Igbo right now. That, that this guy, maybe someone that if he gives something, he will change mouth. A lot, of, a lot of people don't know that Igbos are radicalized. You know, but because of their republican nature, you know, they always told the side of peace. You know, like I always said, Igbo, see, that's the Igbo, Igbo, Igbo slogan, you know. Ebe Beru, Ebe Bere, Ugo Bere, in case Ibe Ebena. Instead, when you go die, make that bed show the other one where you go perch. That's what how Igbo man, or Igbo man does not believe in taking lives like the 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 northerners or or, or people from this Aziz of the Federation. We don't take life. We value life. We we take life seriously. You know. Okay. Um, it was reported that um, Idris Okunaye, that is A.K.A. Bobriski, uh, will be arranged to court today um, for Nera mutilation and abuse of Nera. And um, this is someone that um, is very controversial. Has come out to have um, issue with different um, celebrities. Out of social crime against humanity, and it is time that Nemesis catch us, catches up on, on him. What do you mean by Bobriski? Is Bobriski a name? Bobriski is not a name. Those who have used him have used him, and it is time to dump him. And finally, they have dumped him. You know. See, let me tell you. We know what he's doing to AKA Living. We know what he's doing. And unfortunately, he has been unveiled and we have discovered that he is the most unfortunate person to have taken that kind of step. You know? Look at him. Look at the way he looks. He, he has painted his face to a point that of no recognition. And it is time now for him to answer to the, all the crime, social crime he has committed against the consciousness of Nigerian youths. You know, nobody, I've never seen anybody has talk, spoken good of him, of her. Look at, I don't know, even I'm, I'm saying that DSA should go as far as arresting those who call, who gave him an award as a female uh, uh, best dresser. They should, they should be arrested. They, they should be, no, bro, no matter what, she should be arrested. The, those organizers of that event should be arrested, you know, for playing on the side, for damaging the side of young Nigerians, you know, and for encouraging uh, impunity in, in, in the social uh, circle of, uh, uh, in, in Nigeria. So, so even some has come and said that in the EFCC um, custody, whether it's in the male section or, or the female section. Uh, yes, now, wherever he is, either they put him, what, what they are supposed to be doing, eh, the first day he comes, they put him in the female section. They, they move him from female section to male section. Everyone, so, so, so they move him around like that, like that, like that, like that. Because he's having a dual genotype. Uh, 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 <laughs> Let me just not put it on the social media. But Brisky is having a dual genotype. So they, they, they can put him anywhere, you know, at any time. You no, know? that is the, that is the truth. But whatever that has happened, eh, anything that had to do with Bob Risky or whatever should be condemned by Nigerians. We're not. This is not a society for that rubbish. Thank you so much, my wonderful viewers, for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end. Like I said before, if you like what you see here, if you like what I do in this platform. As you have finished watching this video, please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. Share my videos, leave your comments in the comment section constructively. Until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.